Welcome everyone to this tutorial series on Lab 1Q. In this getting started tutorial, I'm going to take you through the very first step of using our instruments with Lab 1Q. So let's imagine you've just gotten your instrument, you've unpacked it, put it on your desk, and it's looking very nice. But what next? First of all, you need to download Lab 1. Lab 1 is our basic software and interface to manage the connection to our instruments. For this, to get it, you go to our download center on the website and you select the version that is the right one for your operating system, download it from the website, install it and run it. When you run it, you will get a little system tray icon. From here, you can start the interface. We'll open a web interface in your browser and from within this web interface, you can now connect to the instrument. There's different ways of how you can connect to the instrument. For example, how I did it here is directly via USB connected to my computer. In most situations, probably Ethernet will be the better choice. So you can connect the instrument to your local Ethernet within your lab. As long as you're in the same Ethernet with your computer, Lab1 will now find the instrument within the network and will allow you to connect to it. When I now connect to it, Within this interface, I will now see a graphical user interface that gives me an overview of all the parameters and properties of this instrument. However, this tutorial is about Lab1Q. Lab1Q is our Python-based software framework for quantum computing experiments. It is open source and publicly available on our GitHub repository, and it's also available via Piper. So if you want to install it, the recommended uh, the recommended way to install it is via Piper. So let's do that next. When you install it, we always recommend that you use a fresh Python environment simply so that all the dependencies are properly managed. So I've done that now. I've prepared a fresh empty Python environment and I'm going to install lab1q in it. I'm going to type pip install lab1q, execute, and we're already ready to go. So now, what are we going to do with this? What I'm going to demonstrate here in this tutorial is a very simple example of analyzing how to analyze the resonance frequency of, for example, one of these little aluminum pillbox resonators that we have here using an SHFQC qubit controller. So this is our SHFQC. It's essentially our all-in-one qubit control instrument. It has six drive channels in the microwave range that allow you to control the state of your qubits. And it has here a quantum analyzer unit, which has a drive unit um, to excite, for example, this resonator, and an analyzer unit that analyzes the return uh, from your system on the test. Um, in this case, I'm only going to use the quantum analyzer part of the instrument to, uh, to excite this resonator at specific frequencies and then analyze the return signal at the same frequency. This example notebook um, is publicly available, again, in our GitHub, or you can also download it through our manual. You will find the link below in the comments. Um, and uh, let's get started with the code. So as usual with Python, I first need to import all the functionality I want to use. And then I'm already starting with the interesting parts. First thing in the notebook, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what we call a device setup. A device setup is a Python object in Lab 1Q that contains all the information you need about what instruments you are using for specific experiments and also how the instruments are connected to your system under test. In this example, we're using a little helper function to create this device setup. There's a lot of customization that can happen on this level of the device setup. This will all be covered in a different tutorial. For the very simple purposes of this tutorial, this help function is sufficient. And all I've modified in this help function from the publicly available code is I've actually supplied it with the specific ID of this instrument that I'm using here. And I've also supplied it the information that I'm connecting to it via USB instead of Ethernet. Next, I'm going to actually establish the connection of Lab1Q with this instrument. In this case, I'm setting a little flag, use emulation, false because I actually connect them to a live instrument. Emulation allows you 
to play around with LiveOnQ, to play around with your experiments, design experiments, debug experiments, check out if you done the right thing, designed the right experiment without having an instrument available, without having anything here. So you can just go down to LiveOnQ and start playing around with it without having anything, uh, any instrument in your lab. But in my case, I actually have an instrument. I'm not connected to it. So let's get going with the experiment. So I want to analyze the resonance frequencies of this little cavity. I'm going to analyze it in a band of one gigahertz around a center frequency of six gigahertz. That's a parameter I've already set in my experiment. I'm going to analyze it for a thousand distinct frequency points within this one gigahertz bandwidth. And for each frequency point, I'm going to integrate the return signal for 10 milliseconds. These are parameters I set to my experiment. And I'm not going to go into any more detail about how to define this experiment here. It's going to be other tutorials dedicated to how you can design your experiment and debug your experiment to reach your specific goals. In this case, I'm just going to use the example. So I'm going to use the experiment that is defined here. And next, I'm going to compile the experiment. What is happening here is that the Lab1Q compiler is taking the information about your specific experiment, about your specific pulse sequence that you have defined, together with the information about where you want to execute this uh, experiment, so information about the device setup, it's going to combine the two and then uh, generate executable artifacts that essentially are the code that is then consumed by this instrument to execute your specific experiment on the hardware. So I'm going to compile this, it's already finished, and I can run the experiment. So I've told you I have a thousand different frequency point. At each point, I'm going to integrate for 10 milliseconds. So this experiment is going to purely runtime is going to have about 10 seconds. And after about 11 seconds, the Python, uh, Python returns, and I have already the data available on my computer to analyze. So let's plot the returned data. And I see a set of very nice resonances around six gigahertz. Of course, what I'm getting from instrument is actually a complex value. So I'm demodulating the return and then integrating in the complex plane. So I can also look at the phase of this information. If I plot this, I actually can see quite a bit more structure than if I look at the absolute value of the return itself. That's it. That's all I wanted to show. There's a lot more tutorials available within this series for you to learn about concepts and about how to use Lab1Q. There's a lot a lot of examples, application-specific examples, but also examples on the concepts of Lab1Q available publicly on our GitHub and within our manual. Excited to see what you get up to with Lab1Q. Thank you for watching.